Hey everyone, if you want to make your own podcast but you don't know where to begin, Spotify for Podcasters makes it super easy. They've got everything in one place, it's totally free, and you can make money while doing it. Here's how it works. Spotify for Podcasters lets you record and edit podcasts right from your phone or computer, so no matter what your setup is like, you can start doing it today. Then you can distribute your podcast to Spotify and pretty much everywhere else podcasts are heard. Video podcasts are also supported, and you can even conduct polls and Q&As. With Spotify for Podcasters, you can earn money in a variety of ways, including ads and podcast subscriptions. And best of all, the platform is totally free. No catch, totally free. When I wanted to start my own podcast, I did not know where to begin, and I didn't think it was even possible. And Spotify for Podcasters made it happen. They made it easy. They made it quick. And I am doing something that I love. What more can I ask for? So if you're interested in starting your own show, you can do it. And I highly recommend you give this a try. Download the Spotify for Podcasters app or go to www.spotify.com slash podcasters to get started. Hey, everybody. What's up? Welcome back to another episode of Everything Kratom, the podcast about anything. And everything. Kratom. Great to have you with us on this Friday morning. Yes, indeed. We made it through another week. Woo! There's some more clapping for you. I am very happy today, and I hope you are too. So today, what I was thinking was, um, I mentioned this last week, I wanted to look a little bit at Europe what is the Kratom situation in Europe, right? It's complicated. Europe is complicated. And of course, that's kind of what I was expecting when I started to look into this. And I've really just done some preliminary research. This is very, very basic research. So not, you know, in-depth analysis of country by country or anything. But, you know, eventually my my hope is that I'm going to gain an understanding of all the countries in Europe when it comes to their views of Kratom and histories of Kratom and and what they're thinking, what's next. You know, but obviously there's a lot of different countries involved when it comes to talking about Europe. And so I am fascinated to see that there is a European Kratom Alliance and they have coordinated with the American Kratom Association. And there's a website now, which I'll link in the description of this podcast, which uh, is their home base, their headquarters. And and I am so excited to to learn about this. I've reached out to them. I'm hoping to actually talk with some people from the European Kratom Alliance. Hopefully they'll um, uh, get my message and, and take a look and see if they can do some sort of a conversation with me because I would love to get their insight into what they think about the situation, current situation of Kratom in Europe and specific, you know, countries that we should be paying attention to and then also, you know, how they see the future of Kratom taking shape. So I'm hoping that they'll get back to me on that. Um, but of course, they're very busy, so I'm not necessarily expecting them to. But we'll see. You know, here's my one time of saying this. I can dream, can't I? There you go. OK, so um, but anyway, with a little bit of research I did, Europe is complicated. So let's take a look at the countries that are in Europe and how they view Kratom. What I was first expecting was completely obliterated, but what I was expecting originally was to see, um, you know, countries in the western part of Europe more relaxed when it comes to Kratom, and then as you move east, being less relaxed about it. I was completely wrong, and I had no idea what the situation was, so uh, this was completely new information to me. But I'm going to go through this list because I think it's fascinating. So these, when I looked at, you know, the current situation of Kratom in Europe, I have three categories marked out. Is it legal? Is it illegal? Or is it a controlled substance or a blurry gray area? And so what I found was 15 countries have it legal. 20 countries have it illegal. Seven countries, it's in a controlled substance or blurry gray area classification. That's also not what I was expecting whatsoever. So let's take a look. Legal. These countries have Kratom 100% legal. Albania, Austria, Belgium, Bosnia, Czech Republic, Germany, Greece, 
Hungary, Kosovo, Malta, Montenegro, Netherlands, Slovakia, Spain, Ukraine. That is such a mix, you know, like it's a mix of Eastern European, Western European, Northern European, Southern European, all over the map. Controlled substance, blurry gray area countries. So there's just seven of these. Denmark, Estonia, Iceland, Norway, Portugal, Serbia, Sweden. So that one is a good mix as well. Although, you know, I have to say it's not quite as all over the map. I mean, it is because you've got Iceland and Denmark, but then you've got Estonia and then you've got, you know, like Serbia. So, you you know, you're getting you're from north to south with Portugal as well. And then you've also got, you know, a little bit of east um, or central. So, you know, but it's not quite as all over the map as the, the legal ones. Illegal, completely all over the map. 20 countries fall under the illegal classification of Kratom. So here those ones are. Belarus, Bulgaria, Croatia, Cyprus, Finland, France, Ireland, Italy, Latvia, Lithuania. My family's actually from Lithuania. Represent Luxembourg, Moldova, North Macedonia, Poland, Romania, Russia, Slovenia, Switzerland, Turkey, United Kingdom. So that is the most surprising thing to me. I I I seemed to have remembered when I started looking into this that the UK wasn't friendly to Kratom. So that one wasn't surprising to me because I kind of already knew that. But just the broad swath of countries from all over Europe, and that's as far east and west as you can go. Um, you know, these countries, their governments are absolutely completely different in some circumstances. Their view towards drugs is very different from what I can tell, although, you know, I'm no expert on this. This is stuff I'm going to be learning uh, as I look at this over the next few months. Um, but but really, like, it's I cannot find a pattern. And I think that it's fascinating that Kratom is, you know, the one thing I'm not surprised about is that Kratom is not a political thing, even in Europe. It's not something that you can like guess, oh, this country is this way or this party is this way. And so they're going to feel this way towards Kratom. Like it's just Kratom is this weird wild card. It's the, you know, it's, it's the black sheep of the family of drugs out there. It's just, what is it? Right. So I find this fascinating. A lot of these countries, when I looked into them, it said that like the classification is more or less illegal, but there's like some debate about it, you know, yada, yada. If there was any question about it, like I really, I I wanted to make sure that if, if it's on paper is illegal or if it's generally on paper is illegal, you know, just mark it down as illegal. So the, the seven countries that I have it in the blurry area, it's because it really is a blurry classification. Um, so overall, super interesting to see how Kratom, you know, is played out in these different countries. I'd be very interested to know if there is pending legislation in any of these countries to consider Kratom in a different light than the country already considers it and why that is. I have not heard much about the European Kratom Alliance, um, you know, their, their, uh, movement until recently and their formation. I am very interested to learn about their work and what they think, you know, the situation is with Kratom in Europe. And I have a lot to learn on this one. I think we all do. And since they're, you know, working with the American Kratom Association, uh, I think that they're going to be a great resource and I'm hoping to talk with someone there. So very excited to learn more about Europe. And also, you know, I think that they contributed a good deal to the information that was reviewed at the World Health Organization meeting, which ended up ultimately, you know, ending with them not doing the the critical review of Kratom. So, you know, they contributed to that body of work and research. Um, I've read a number of studies, a number of studies about Kratom that have been done in Europe. And so Europe is, you know, it's, it's alive. It's, it's, there is movement there. And it's, it's just interesting to think about any sort of issue in a different country compared to your own. And then, uh, you know, how that issue is viewed differently as well. And, you know, not to get into politics or anything, 
as always, I say this show isn't about politics, but what I mean by that is, you know, this whole trucker protest uh, that's happened in Canada recently, a lot of the media in America has been covering this as saying, wow, this is so weird. This is like an American style protest, right? Like I've seen that wording all over the place, Um, regardless of what you think about it. And if you support it or if you're against it, um, it's I that's what I mean. Looking at this, you know, issue and seeing it from an American lens and thinking, huh, that's interesting because I feel like Canada wouldn't protest this way or no, what are you talking about? Canada's our neighbor. And of course they would see it this way. And then what do Canadians think about this? Do they think that this protest is, you know, kind of out of character for their country or do they think, what are you talking about? This is just a protest. Um, you know, it's always interesting to view things from a different country's perspective. So when it comes to Kratom, I'm just fascinated because even state by state, this is viewed differently, right? In the U.S. Now imagine different countries all next to each other having completely opposing views of the exact same substance. They're all part of the EU as well. So it's like, well, not all of them, but a lot of them are part of the EU as well. So it's like, it just makes me wonder, you know, that aspect of it. You know, I I don't understand European law. Um, If there are any laws, like when it comes to export, imports, people traveling with drugs, what the EU has to say about that. Um, And and so that's a whole nother, you know, uh, structure or framework of, of law that's built on top of the fact that each country might have their own laws when it comes to Kratom. And it's not just international boundaries, but it's also you're in the EU and and are there agreements or laws when it comes to transporting plant material like that? Like, who knows? It's all over the place. Supplements, you know. So um, this is me nerding out, (laughs) as you can tell. But I'm very excited to be learning more about this. And just looking at that list of countries, fascinating to me fascinating. What I'm going to do is I'm going to leave that list in the description of this podcast as well. It'll be at the bottom because it's a long list. Um, It might not be a perfect list, but from all the data I could gather, this is generally what the situation is currently in Europe. But if you have any corrections and you happen to know more about this than I do, which I don't doubt some of you do, I know we have some listeners from Germany uh, and from Slovenia on this, that listen to this podcast, as well as a few other European countries. And thanks for tuning in, all of you. Um, uh, you know, if you have any corrections or updates, please let me know, reach out, and uh, I'll definitely not only correct that list, but I'll make an announcement in the next episode because I want to make sure this is accurate. So thanks so much for tuning in, everybody. Let's keep on looking at Europe as, as things progress, and uh, hopefully we can talk with someone from the European Kratom Alliance sometime soon. All right, everybody, have a great weekend. Hope you're all doing great, and uh, we'll talk with you on Monday. Take it easy. Bye-bye.